Summer vacation time is quickly fading, but this season is expected to break records worldwide, with billions of people breaking out their suitcases, sandals, and swimsuits. And while tourism is a huge moneymaker, a growing number of destinations are finding their visitors, well, rather annoying, and asking many to stay away. Special correspondent Malcolm Brabant has been looking at European hotspots that are trying to deter the holiday hordes, and he starts his report from the Cotswolds in southwestern England. Straddling the river Windrush, Borton on the Water is known as the Little Venice of the Cotswolds, a region of southern England notable for its mellow, honeyed stone architecture. This is England at its finest. It's picture perfect, almost fairy tale beautiful and wonderfully tranquil. But you have to get up early to find it like this, especially when the sun deigns to appear. When you think a population of about 4,300 and we get round about one and a quarter million tourists a year, you know, you can see how people get stressed out by it. John Waring is a district councillor and an occasionally frazzled resident. I've had a number of people who've actually said they're considering moving from Borton because they just can't take the over-tourism anymore. One of Borton's attractions is a replica of the village, a suitable metaphor for tourism's footprint here and around the world. When you come to live in a place like Borton on the Water, you would be a fool to do so if you couldn't handle knowing that there was a peak tourist season and that you were going to see a lot of people. I just need a word with the imp in here. An employee here for nearly 30 years, Brownie Holden is unapologetic about the commercial benefits of tourism. It doesn't really affect us. We work in the village, we welcome the people, and then we go home, close our front doors, there's nobody else there. Although few in number, many villagers share a kinship with bigger destinations whose quality of life has been diminished by tourism. I think the challenge is how we get the right balance of numbers of visitors so that the experience for them and for local people is not a negative one. On Santorini, the jewel of Greek islands, residents were angered recently at being urged to stay indoors on a day it was swamped by 17,000 cruise line passengers. The Greek government is considering limiting the number of ships that can dock at once and overwhelm people like Hotelier Yorgos Damigos. When we increase the number of uh, visitors 20 times, I know for a fact that our standards of living has, uh, gone, has gone down. As tourists crowded into narrow lanes to capture the sunset over an extinct volcano, Portuguese visitor Rita Cristoval made this appeal. Maybe there, there should be some rules about the maximum visitors uh, per day that uh, uh, Santorini should have so every visitor can have a more pleasant experience. In early July in Barcelona, some demonstrators delivered their message to visitors with water pistols. I condemn this expression. It goes against our country's values and sentiments. Spain's tourism minister and Barcelona's former mayor, Jordi Herriu. I want to reaffirm the values of hospitality of Spain and the Spanish tourism model and one of its characteristics, which is security. But Barcelona is turning up the temperature. Cruise passengers who visit the city for less than 12 hours will have to pay an increased tourist tax if the mayor gets his way. He says day trippers aggravate the sense of occupation and saturation without providing any benefit. That sentiment is shared from the Canary Islands to Amsterdam, capital of the Netherlands. Last year, exasperated by weekly drink and drug fueled bad behaviour in the red light district, the city launched a campaign aimed squarely at the usual suspects, young British men. I think we can say this hasn't had much of an impact. Based in Valencia, Spain, Ford Keys is a travel analytics company that monitors who's traveling where and when. Olivier Ponti is its director of intelligence and marketing. Looking at the year-to-date data, we can see a 17% increase in English arrivals to uh, Schiphol Airport in, uh, in Amsterdam. So what does Amsterdam need to do to, to try to keep the Brits away? So I think the strategy should be to try and identify those travellers from the UK and other places that could be inter interested in a destination like Amsterdam outside of uh, the high season. 
and Amsterdam has pivoted. Amsterdam makes you see what's alive, what love is, how you can be just you while giving room to others too. It's also an appeal for more respectful behavior. As a tourist, if you can travel outside of the peak holiday season, that's gonna be more enjoyable for you and take the pressure off local residents. Justin Francis runs an ethical travel agency, which advocates that better treatment of local people and places result in better vacations. Spend as many of your dollars in the local community as you can, which shouldn't be a hardship, um, but local hotels, local bars, local restaurants, local markets, because this is the trade-off. You come, you enjoy, but if your money is ending in local hands, it feels a fairer deal for them. The city of Venice can't wait for attitudes to change. This summer, it's levied an entrance fee costing five euros or $5.45. But travel analyst Olivier Ponti says the tax has failed to deter visitors. People want to visit Venice, they want to see it at least once in their, in their life. Is a five euro tax really expected to deter people from fulfilling their dream of visiting Venice? I don't think so. Back in Borton on the Water, Thomas Wong from Des Moines, Iowa, was glad he beat the rush. Yeah, too many tourists, you find it like not as authentic compared to more remote regions, and it's not as like realistic. So I like when there's not as many people, so you can enjoy it by yourself with your family. But day trippers who bring their own picnics and don't contribute to the local economy provide ammunition for those who favor a Venice-style tourist tax. Repairing this green because as you can see, as the numbers start to increase, when it's absolutely full, there's a lot of wear and tear. Residents in the past felt pretty negative about having to be the ones that bear the cost of doing that when they're not the ones enjoying their own amenity. When we visited, there was a better class of traffic jam. But on peak summer days, lines of cars and coaches, or buses as Americans call them, can delay emergency vehicles by over an hour. The problem is there's no longer any provision for coach parking in the village. It causes congestion and it causes a little bit of irritation on some parts, even though we really welcome the coaches. The real difficulty is there are far too many cars coming. If more people took a coach and booked, the problem would probably be solved if there was sufficient provision for the coach parking. From the depths of the English countryside to every point of the compass, tourism is becoming more of a battlefield with every passing day. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Borton on the Water.